educational indoctrination. If you watch enough news or topical debate shows that speak about race or racism, if you have a keen ear, you will notice there is one topic, if brought up, gets little attention. It is the one facet of this sprawling debate that has the most potential to destroy the white supremacist ideology which underpins racism. That topic is education. Children are not born racist is a popular term, but who is teaching them? Some say parents. I ask, who taught the parents? Decolonizing the education system. In her article on decolonizing the education system, Sophia Akel, specialist in race equality in higher education, breaks down how the colonial education system, which is yet to be dismantled, is an agent of white supremacist indoctrination. We must first understand what is meant by colonial education and its intrinsic link to academia. The way in which we come to know and understand and view the world, what academics term epistemology, is learned throughout our lifetime from many influences known as formal and informal agents of social control. These include the state, the law, religion, our families, our neighbourhoods and public opinion. This process is known as socialisation and it is ideologically reinforced through our education. The British education system itself is firmly rooted in colonial epistemology, which centres and upholds the British Empire and the forms that it takes today. What this can look like in schooling is a whitewashed retelling of the history of the empire that speaks only to its successes while omitting its evils and the voices of the oppressed and the lasting legacy of imperialism today. Decolonization typically refers to the withdrawal of political, military and government rule of a colonized land by its invaders. Decolonizing education, however, is often understood as the process in which we rethink, reframe and reconstruct the curricula and research that preserve the European-centered colonial lens. It should not be mistaken for diversification, as diversity can still exist within this Western bias. Decolonization goes further and deeper in challenging the institutional hierarchy and monopoly on knowledge, moving out of a Western framework. Why has the history of African peoples been erased? Well, we don't live in a fair world. Things aren't fair. You don't get equal opportunities. You get the opportunities that you create for yourself. And if someone gets in there first and they conquer you, they colonize you, they enslave you, they simply make your history disappear to make it look like they conquered, colonized and enslaved nobodies. When people have a history, that makes you a somebody. So if you remove the history, you become a nobody. And so, your history disappearing, nobody's lamenting the loss of that history. That's why conquerors, colonizers and enslavers make the people whose history they've conquered, colonized and enslaved, disappear. Within education, there exists a complex web of coded and overt systems through which some forms of knowledge are legitimized those which fit a narrow conservative view of British values and the government of the day's agenda. This is no accident. Education in Britain has and continues to be greatly intertwined with the state. Throughout centuries of British imperialism, universities were not benevolent institutions that abstained from the violent massacring, plunder and invasion of 90% of the world's countries. In fact, some of the subjects we hold in high esteem were founded to support Britain's pursuit for global control. Subjects such as anthropology, the study of human societies and their culture, were inextricably linked to the colonial project. Anthropologists would voyeuristically study the subjects in former colonies, providing highly sought after insights about the peoples Britain wished to rule over. The surveillance of communities enabled the plunderers to strategically plan invasions, divide, conquer and quell insubordination. Certain fields of science such as medicine were not exempt from this either. Colonialists were exposed and vulnerable to new types of diseases, terrain and environments that hindered their exploits. Therefore, research into tropical diseases and medicine was carried out to maintain good health of those invading, not necessarily the invaded. Sir Ronald Ross, former lecturer at Liverpool School of Tropical Diseases, reportedly believed that 
In the coming century, the success of imperialism will depend largely upon success with the microscope. Ross's life and work was actively shaped by empire. Born in India, he later became a surgeon in the British Imperial Army, using his research to strengthen colonial rule and eventually winning the Nobel Prize for his malaria research. The impact of university-created racism, which supported the notion of the white man's burden to civilise the world, echoes loudly today. In 2020, we have witnessed historic global protest against racism and police brutality. Racism that has also masqueraded as academia, fortified in the dusty hallways and dark corridors of Britain's universities. Eugenics, the study of improving the human race through selective breeding, was widely subscribed to and even set up as legitimate research subjects in universities prior to the Second World War. Eugenicists believe the white race is naturally the most superior of all. This pseudoscience was a catalyst for the Holocaust and plays a large role in our educational and societal inequalities today. The Prime Minister Boris Johnson himself expressed eugenicist views and has called for the recolonization of Africa. While only two years ago, secret eugenics conferences were held at the University College of London, tended by prominent white supremacists. When many of us reflect on our journeys through compulsory further and higher education, we don't often recognise the knowledge we gain as inherently political, but it is impossible to divorce our worldview, including our political and moral values, from the subject matter we are taught. If we don't challenge the colonial roots of our education, we are ultimately breathing life into an ideological framework born out of an empire steeped in blood. The task then is for each of us to consciously and intently work to decolonize both our own minds and the institutions that uphold this. There are revolutionary futures that we can imagine for ourselves through alternative ways of understanding the world that do not start, end and seek validation from darkness. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Thank you.